So what I'm doing is I'm using a character from the comic book Orion from Masamune Shiro um, as a, a master copy, just something to learn from, uh, learn a little more about the thinking behind Masamune Shiro uh, when, he, when he draws these characters in this particular comic, um, what his style and methods are, what kind of lines he's using to turn forms and to describe the, the forms, the outline of the forms. And uh, so what I did was, um, instead of copying it exact, I found, um, <clears throat> you know, you can go and take your own photo reference, but if you don't have a camera or you can't, um, position exactly something like this, like overhead, easily, um, you know, reference books are always nice. I know a lot of mangaka and comic book artists use uh, reference all the time. Um, you know, these days it's on Google, or they use their own photos, but um, tons of mangaka and even animators use all kinds of photo book ref reference, uh, like the one I have here. And so I just picked the pose that's kind of similar, an overhead shot, to this character. And uh, I'm just drawing the outline. Uh, one of the things uh, that having reference for a pose allows you to do is you don't have to draw um, unconfidently with very rough, stitchy lines or scratchy lines trying to figure out your form or where you're going, uh, you can just follow the silhouette. And it may not be accurate or perfect, but you could always uh, change it. When I'm drawing isn't uh, perfect, I could always go in and um, white out the arm or other parts and uh, redraw it, change the, um, the positioning or the size or whatever or I could draw over it with red line just to correct it and redraw it again so I get it right next time uh, or at least that part hopefully but I may not I may have to keep redrawing a few times and then I may get something else wrong but in any case so I'm just looking at the outlines it's all there for me and you know my proportions aren't exactly like uh, uh, Shiro's, but I'm not really, tr I'm not worrying about that right now. The proportions aren't quite as important to me in this study as just trying to see if once I get down the basic form, the outline, from the reference, the photo reference, can I, using some of his uh, markings, his marks his, and his uh, graphic design, like of the uh, eyes and the face, can I sort of make the character feel like it's from his world? You know, as if I'm drawing a comic uh, for him, let's say, or like him. Um, you know, the proportions, I know her, her proportions are definitely shorter, and especially the upper body. Uh, my, um, my waist is much longer uh, than even the reference, the photo reference. The photo reference is probably closer to his character than my drawing. So I'm just quickly making the graphics of the face design that he uses. And I'm not doing this so I can draw like him or start drawing just like him. Uh, I really uh, enjoy his art, his characters, his backgrounds, his vehicles, buildings, everything he draws. Um, his panels are beautiful, but um, I'm not really trying to pick uh, up his style or anything. 
more just trying to learn from him some of his decision making maybe some of it will go into my work like the way he simplifies things or chooses to simplify it um, other people who draw the body simply may draw extra lines in there that he doesn't I notice for instance uh, in a lot of if you look at other panels when I, at least when I look at this character he doesn't draw much uh, inside lines very much inside the arms or legs particularly the arms uh, even more so like uh, a lot of people who draw the outline might at least draw a little bit of the muscle where the forearm is turning but uh, he often won't do that he goes flat which is pretty interesting um, I like that for different reasons uh, it, it, I think if there was a line there uh, it may interrupt the graphic uh, quality of the overall shape of her body with all that other stuff going on behind her if there was a line in the middle of her arm it might just look like another one of those lines the swirly uh, of the swirly you know cloud going around her and uh, that might uh, confuse the eye it might by creating a mark there um, it just adds pattern over her where he wants that to stand out on top of the background so and I notice he does that in quite a lot of panels since he, the panels in the background are so busy so that's that's an interesting way to approach it um, that's something I, I might recall later if I handle if I create a really detailed busy background I might choose to not add that extra muscle indication of a muscle but you can see he does do it at the knees and the reason why I think why we'd go that far is simply because uh, it helps with the perspective by indicating the knee uh, and you see how short the uh, lower leg is compared to the upper leg it helps create the uh, illusion of uh, depth as if we're looking down on her and uh, the lens makes it where you know her feet and lower legs are smaller than the upper part of the body closer to us and so again I'm not going for her pose not really even going for her exact look or trying to get her facial expression exact but what I am trying to do is also you know I'm copying her clothing a little bit um, just so I can practice for instance how uh, underneath the right arm the way the clothing wraps around uh, her arm and the sh he casts the shadow on the inside of the cloth things like that I'm just trying to learn from that Masamune Shiro definitely um, he draws you know manga in general you know a lot of times has very detailed backgrounds uh, with simplified characters and you know often I think mangaka um, will just trace backgrounds down uh, so they'll add in all the details uh, in his case he doesn't do that the way he draws um, he's inventing everything. I mean, he may he may definitely have reference. Uh, I would assume he uses reference books, just like the one I have for these poses. I've seen plenty of Japanese mangaka with photos with them, with their books next to them, and they have all animators and mangaka have all kinds of, re of these reference books. That's why there's so many of them, these Japanese reference books. And they have them with schools, of buildings, so if you want to do a, like a high school, manga or anime about um, high school students they do have reference books just at a campus and the kind that you find in Japan so if you want to do one that's more close to home wherever you are that, that you know feels like home 
um, I don't know if where you are will have reference, but you can at least see if you can make arrangements to photograph at, at some school somewhere. Or maybe if you attend a school, you can shoot there your photographs. But reference definitely helps. Uh, it allows you, so I could be sketching this, but if I sketch this, like if I were to just copy his drawing, well, if I were to copy his drawing, I could do it exactly like I'm doing now. Uh, but if I were to just sketch with nothing, uh, more than likely, I'll have a lot more rougher lines. It may not be so clearly defined always. Um, but by having both reference and a masterwork of some kind to help um, learn uh, the line quality and line thickness, weight, um, the type of patching or texture or method of shading, um, how much information to put in, where each artist has a different way, helps you interpret the photographic reference that you'd be using in a different way, which is really helpful. And In other videos, in other videos, I've mentioned uh, Charles Bark. He and another artist from an uh, earlier century um, made a, a book. They called it a course. I guess they gave courses at that time, but uh, we have the prints of those books, and uh, they, you know, they instruct on. The books just had pictures, but uh, they studied sculptures and and from the life uh, from the figure and uh, the style is basically silhouette, and then you add in the shading, so it's kind of like a sight size method if you've ever heard that. Except when, I, when I'm approaching, I'm not really doing it sight size, where I'm matching the exact size to the reference next to me. It's just observing and drawing the outline. But there's a lot to learn from those um, pages, the artworks that they've created. So this is, you know, there's a lot of mistakes, not perfect. But it's clean enough for a sketch. It looks pretty clean. A lot cleaner than other sketches may be. So if I were to draw a bunch of uh, sketches, let's say do a comic page, and this is my rough, it's pretty good for rough. It's pretty clear um, for a character in its pose. And it wouldn't be difficult to clean something like that up. And so here's, um, right before I did this one, uh, I, I tried it out, and here's a different pose. I remembered to draw the beads in there, and um, I kind of like, this one's much more elongated than a skinnier character, uh, the way it's drawn. But I liked, I liked uh, the results, so I decided to try it again and hit record so I could share this uh, method. I hope it uh, 
gives somebody some ideas or helps out in some kind of way how to use your books in a way uh, that's fruitful for you to improve uh, whatever you're doing your knowledge, your skill or anything and again um, this is uh, called How to Draw Manga um, you can find these books online if you don't have a Kinakunia store anywhere near you and these you know, books are really useful like I said there's all sorts this one's a schoolgirl posing catalog so the girls at a desk in different situations like that uh, so again if you're doing like a school story that might come useful some of the pages of the poses so that's it let uh let Masamune Shiro uh, teach us how to draw so here we can find the Charles Bark drawing course online for free it's on a open website the book is from the 1800s uh, so there's no copyright for it, you know, you know, anyone can access it on this archive. And this is the entire book. It's the actual course with um, the plates, the pictures you would learn from that they used based on uh, sculptures and busts that they drew from in order to uh, study the contour and also the shadowing. And then uh, the shadow lines, I should say, the contour of the shadow lines, and then shading. Uh, you know, they use charcoal. You can use any medium you want. And uh, this is a very useful book. Now here's I have the book on the right, Cours de, de Dessin. It's only $8. Um, it has part one and part three of the book. It, it just has the plates. It doesn't have the explanation. Please click like and subscribe if anything I shared was inspirational. My goal with this show is to inspire as many people as I can reach to follow their bliss. Thanks. Now back to your regularly scheduled program.